Hello everyone. This is Connie from Sweet Tea Designs. You saw a couple of the uh, nautical wreaths that I have been making lately. And I'd like to make another one this afternoon and show you how I did it. This one won't be exactly like the other two, but it will be close. I don't have the same don't always have the same mesh that I had for another project, and I don't always have the same uh, decorations. But this mesh, it, I love it. I know probably you've seen it before. It's cotton ball mesh, 10 and a half inches by 10 yards, and it's $6.99, and I got it at Trees and Trends. I don't know if you have a Trees and Trends around you. You can probably probably get it at craft outlet or the wreath shop or somewhere like that but it it's so pretty and i thought it looked so great uh as i you can probably see a little bit of this wreath over here it has the brown and the white so to me that's the sand and the foam that comes up from the water that looks white and that's at the bottom then at the top for the water I used a different color wreath, I mean mesh, for uh, the other two that I've made. I want to try to find some more of that mesh. I haven't, I think I got the last two rolls that uh, Michael's had one day. But I thought this was beautiful. You could use any type of blue, turquoise, teal to represent the water. There's another color that I think is great and this came from Hobby Lobby $7.99 which means I probably paid half I usually just uh, buy their mesh and their ribbon and things when they're half so that would only be about four dollars for that and I think that is just gorgeous um, so let me show you the method I used I didn't cut 10 by 10 strips all of these uh, mesh rolls that I'm using today, or the two I'm using today, are like ten and a half inches wide. I didn't um, use the 21. Now you've probably seen the um, the method that we cut ten by ten squares and we crunch these up and make ruffles. But this is a different way to make the ruffled wreath. And it's so much, to me, it's so much easier and very little cutting, which means very little fraying. So I want you to look, though. This wreath is, I think it's, uh, it's actually about 17 inches from outer ring across the center to the other outer ring. The diameter is 17 inches. This wreath will come out a little bit more than that on each side, but not, not too awfully much. So here, I don't know if you've seen this method used or not, but what you are doing, you pick up, well, sometimes I do two rows of this ruffle method, and I'll do one row on this third ring from the center, one, two, three, and then I'll do another one next to it on the second ring. So I thought, well, that's what I'll do. But by the time I did it on one of the rings, it was already so full and fluffy and pretty that I didn't need a second. I did not need a second row. And let me check. I did do it on the I did do it on the second ring. So here's how it goes. Here's your mesh. You can Put it on your table. It probably won't stay still very long, just like children. Or I have a waste basket, a small waste basket here. And uh, it's just a small waste basket. It's empty, and I put my mesh roll in that. Then I just want to uh, gather up. Now I sort of fold over the end and gather up. And you don't even really have to do that, really. Just gather up and um, you sort of start out like you're going to do the poof method. And that is where you just 
you just start out uh, you might put a zip tie you could use a pipe cleaner just something to attach the mesh to the beginning point so you use whatever whatever you have on hand or whatever you like to use so I will uh, just on this one ring I am going to zip tie it to the work form this ring with four loops this is my work form now I bought a tool that that closes a zip tie and cuts it when I I just got it took it out of the package today so I'm not going to use it today but I plan on using it it will make this so that it's not it will not scratch or stick you so I'm going to just push this down here to the back now here's the easy part all you have to do is take your mesh bring some up on both sides of this second ring you want to bring it up bring it up bring it up when you get a little bit of it up I, I try to keep it you know fairly uh, even as far as the amount of mesh that comes up so then you just scoot it down you just mash it together bring up some more just bring up a little bit more mash it down just keep bringing this up bring it up bring it up bring it up I try not to let it uh, overlap itself in the on our ring but I just uh, keep pushing and when you think it's um, full enough then I'll show you what we do next we just go on to the next section I call these sections between these uh, the divisions let's say I start I'm going to start counting right here uh, here's one two three four five six seven eight and the one with the mesh would be nine so there are nine divisions I'm going to go up this first one and I'm going to uh, use four of the sections with this uh, sandy colored mesh that's what I did on here I just used four sections and look how nice and full that is I mean you can't uh, you can just twist it if you are maybe seeing a little bit more of the frame than you want it really doesn't matter you can't even tell it on my, on that one my other uh, wreath I will tell you I don't know if I told you this or not but I used this one I used uh, two fish and it has some I wrapped some extra twine around the base of the fish and I glued on some shells so I'm going to continue on until I get four of these sections just damn packed all right I'm gonna go I'm pretty much done with that one I'll just go under this bar and start again on this next section and again I'm I am just going on either side of this second ring I'm pulling up half of the mesh on each side and I try to keep it now it gets a little tricky when you go under the bar there and, and you're trying to bring it back up because it wants to be a little shorter because you've lost a little so I just pull up a little extra and push it in now what I mean by what I'm doing is I'm taking my mesh my 10 or 10 and a half inch mesh and my second bar is actually right here in the middle I'm pulling up this mesh on each side of this second bar and then I mash it together to make it look ruffled so it uh, I've seen this done several times with burlap and uh, I've done it I've started doing it with some of my met my other mesh wreaths because you just don't have to worry about fraying everybody wants to know how do you stop your 
mesh from fraying. Well, different people do different things. They use um, starch, they've used hairspray, they use uh, sealant, they've used um, clear, like clear paint or clear varnish in a spray can and um, so many different things. And unless there's a reason you don't like this ruffle method, to me it is way less time consuming than cutting up a million 10 by 10 squares, folding them over, putting them in piles of three, uh, putting them on every single ruffle, every single set of three ruffles, I'll say, have to be put on the wreath separately. That's a lot of work, and it takes a lot of time. Look at that. I already got two sections done, so I'm going in for the third section. I haven't had to cut my mesh. I don't I don't even use a complete roll. I don't believe I use a complete roll for, you know, of course it's only four sections, but uh, you could do two wreaths probably out of this uh, one roll if you did it like this, if it was nautical and you were using it in only four of your sections. But you know, this is a fairly good sized wreath too. You, uh, if you used a smaller wreath frame, if you used a smaller wreath frame, you wouldn't use as much, of course, of the mesh. So, you might get two or three out of a roll of mesh. Of course, we still have more mesh to put in because we have to put the blue in. But, <clears throat> is this not scrumptious? This just looks so cute. Look at that. That is darling, I think. And um, I've got it down here. It's not It's not um, rolling all over the room. It's, it's just staying in my little waste can. I started out, I was going to put it in a um, trash bag and hang it from the table. And then I saw this little basket and I thought, oh my gosh, that would be perfect. Now, it wouldn't be big enough for a 21-inch wreath, but you could get a bigger basket to use. So I'm on my third, oh gosh, I'm almost on my fourth section. So, uh, there, you know, I'm not having to glue anything at this point. I ha am not using pipe cleaners. I haven't even had to cut anything except I cut the edge of the zip tie so it, it just I mean I can see sometimes when you would want to use uh, a different method and the um, ruffle method that you do with the squares it, it is really pretty it's just a lot of work and but like I said there are some things that might call for that um, there might be certain types of wreaths, just like this one. I wouldn't, um, I don't have to do two, uh, two rows of this. I thought about it. I thought, well, you know, I could do a white row, which would be this big, and then I could do a beige row. And then when I saw this uh, mesh and it had the white for the, the water, you know, coming up, the foam coming up on the beach. I thought, ah, oh, that's all in one. I'll just use that. So I have the fourth section just about finished. And probably too much. No, I mean the third section. I'm sorry. One, two, three sections. Okay, so look at how nice the back is, though. I've done wreaths before where the back just looked awful. I mean, this is not even going to scratch your uh, your door or your window because there's nothing. There are no sticks. There are no, uh, other than that one zip tie, which we could cover, there really is nothing 
to uh, scratch your door. There is a way, though, that uh, you may have seen before on different tutorials on how to cover the back if you want to. I don't think this one needs a full cover on the back. Maybe do something to uh, cover that little uh, part of the zip tie that might poke you. Um, so you, you might ask, well, how long have I been doing wreaths? I don't really have any tutorials out on it. Um, but my mother, it's a long, long story. I had a gift shop at one time many years ago. Then my mother, when I decided to get out of that and go back to teaching school, because she had a regular paycheck, then she sort of wanted to do it. She had never shown any artistic talent in any of the years that I <laughs> knew her since I was born. Um, I always wish she did have a little more uh, knowledge and interest in crafts because I've been interested in crafts since I was a young child. I used to go in the summers and go to our school and they had craft. You paid some money and you made keychains and things like that. Um, and so I, I did that. I would go by myself, even if no one else went with me. And I really, you know, liked it. And I've dabbled in a little bit of everything in the, in the way of crafts. Now this, I tell you, some people just wrap it around. Some people will put a twist tie. I'll probably put a twist tie when I'm done. But, you know, you don't, it's pretty much going to stay in there. So now I'm ready for my blue. Now this is pretty, pretty nice. So I'm gonna probably have to really squish this to, to, for it to compare. I don't think this is as nice as the blue that I had in my other one, but we'll see. Now you might say, well, which side do you put in? I put the side that rolls up on its own. I try to put that underneath and come up from there. Now, if I didn't like this, if I see that I really don't like it, I always have this other turquoise. I do have a little more of the, I'll find it. But anyway, I do have a little more of the, it's almost a denim look uh, on this other wreath, on the other two wreaths I've made. And, um, ooh, but I think this is going to be very pretty. So, I haven't done any lives, of course. This is barely my, oh, I did a tutorial one time about making paper baskets at Easter, and that was, <laughs> that was a little dorky. But, <clears throat> um, I have, I should have a doctorate degree if I could count the number of hours I have watched tutorials of other people making wreaths. I could easily have a doctorate degree, but... I just love it. In fact, you know, I love watching other people about as much as I love doing it myself because their ideas are so great and then I get all inspired. And as my husband says, I go buy more supplies and he does not like, he thinks I have too many supplies right now. And someday I'll show you <laughs> my supplies in my basement and you will understand. I do have too many. And I finally think I'm coming to realize that. But um, if you all, you know, have any questions you want to ask me about this or any other wreath, I love to do grapevine. I'm going to really try to do maybe at least once a week here at the beginning and might grow into more than that. I want to do some lives, but I'm a chicken. Right now I'm just too chicken to do it. But hopefully I will sometime. I love to paint. I like to paint, um, you know, signs and things like that. I have done, uh, like I said, I've done great. I've done uh, flower arranging, um, anything in the craft line. 
I'm not saying I've always done the best job at it, but I give it a try. I love. I, I really wish you all would tell me something you would like me to do because I have a probe of the hand and I love it, love it, love it. And I think I have a very simple tutorial that uh, would really help people that are having trouble with it. I had trouble with it at first myself. Um, I had to watch Regina Zeller's, um, and she does a, an excellent, excellent um, tutorial on Probo. You know, she's the one that uh, invented it. And she's sweet, sweet, sweet person. She's emailed me a couple times or texted me and just told me thank you for um, maybe saying that I liked the Pro Bowl. But it, uh, and then um, you may know about the Terry Bow, Mill and Dill Designs, uh, Terry Marshall from Mill and Dill Designs. She came up with a bow that you make on the Pro Bowl that is different from the regular um, bow that it was designed to make. And I love those bows too. And um, I used to think that a bow maker, now I was a whole lot younger, I thought a bow maker, wow, that'd be great. You just put some ribbon in there and something comes out on the other end and it's a bow. Mm-mm, that's not the way it works. A whole lot bigger learning curve than that. So you have to learn how to use the equipment, but it is not hard. And the Provo is not expensive. I also have the Bodabra. You've probably heard of that. You all see what I'm doing? I've got the bottom. Got my four sections. I love this mesh uh, that I got from Trees and Trends. It is so easy to use. It doesn't hurt your hands. It doesn't seem to pick your clothes as much. I'm wearing the my mesh shirt, I guess you'd say, because I get so many marks on my clo clothing because of the mesh pulling the threads in my shirt. So a lot of times I just throw this shirt on over whatever I've got just so it won't ruin my other clothes. Look at that. It's going fairly fast. I've only got two more sections after this because this is so easy. This was the mesh from Hobby Lobby. It was uh, $7.99. On, I'm sure I bought it on sale, half price. You know, one week they have ribbon which their mesh is included in the ribbon they'll have that half price and then the next week um, they'll have their floral stems and a lot of times when they have the ribbon they'll have uh, some of their florals not the stems but maybe the bushes they'll be on sale of course there are all kinds of vendors you can buy from online sims pottery is a great place I don't know if you're lucky enough to have places near you. I am very fortunate. I live in Kentucky, and everybody thinks nobody can do anything in Kentucky, but we can. We can. And we even have stores. And um, we have Michael's close to me. We have um, Hobby Lobby close to me, and we have Trees and Trends. I love Trees and Trends, but I really don't see too many Trees and Trends around you know, they do have tutorials, Trees and Trends. They do have tutorials, and they are really good. Um, anyway, with those three, you know, I don't have that big a business that I have to go to the big Atlanta Mart, which I would love to do, don't get me wrong. But, uh, and I, I want to do that sometime. So I just try to hit up the sales especially after a holiday. I should be at Hobby Lobby today buying up Easter thing, supplies for next year. But I had the best time the other day. I went to Harbor Freight. 
I was all by myself and I bought a few little tools I had been wanting and I just had a ball. I can find something to buy anywhere. Just You just ask my family. They say that I can go to the gas station and go in and pay and come out with something. <laughs> and, uh, yep, that's just how I am. I love to, I do love to spend money, and I admit it. Love, love, love. I, and one thing I love, I like to have, if I need something, I like to have it. If I don't want to have to say, oh, I have to quit and go get something. I mean, I want, I want to have all supplies that could possibly be needed. Not that I, I'm sure there are supplies I don't have, but I, I have a lot of supplies. I even have an embroidery machine that I don't even use, but I've got to get started on it. So, what do you think? One more section. That, now, how long do you think it would have taken me to cut all those squares? Have you noticed most of the tutorials they don't show you cut they don't show you all the steps in making the wreath. They cut a few and then they turn off the video and cut the rest. And I don't blame them because you don't want to sit and watch that. But with this, I know it might be a little long. But it's not so long that you can't watch the whole thing or just fast forward me if you don't want to watch. But it is just, I just can't get over how. And I have known how, how to do this for a long time, but I can't get over how easy it is. Why didn't I do this more? Now I have made these with two different meshes on the same sections. I could do a, one color and do another color. I have done that before. It's very, very, very full. And most of the time, most of the time you don't need that. But if you wanted to, you could. You do one. In fact, I've done even the burlap where you, you, you do one row and then you do the next row. And it's all in burlap, but you have two rows. You may notice my voice is a little scratchy. I had the creepy crud last week, along with many people in our area, and our church went to, uh, had a mission team that went to Guatemala a couple weeks ago, and a couple of them have really had the flu, but I'm not saying it's from that, because we've had several people from our church have the flu, or whatever it was called, I don't know. I didn't call the doctor. I didn't figure he knew. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do for a cold? You'd think these scientists that think they know it all could figure that out. <laughs> Sorry if I offended any scientists. My daughter teaches science. I guess I better not say anything. Or she used to. I, uh, I guess you noticed I've really done a lot of talking. Um, I am a talker. I have done, I haven't done any, you know, videos like this, but I have um, done tutorials, you might say, for years because I was a teacher. I taught math to middle schoolers, so I have um, done some teaching in front of a lot of people, but uh, it is different when you're doing it in front of eighth graders because you figure, no, no, I know more than they do, <laughs> where... When I'm doing this in front of you guys, I'm thinking, Ew, they're probably thinking, she doesn't know what she's doing. I know more than she does. But maybe not. Um, so you can go through, though, and, and just, if you see a, something that looks a little short, one of the loops, you can go through. And I want you to look. Oh, that really, I wish I had time to myself. Well, I guess maybe my, it's been uh, less than 30 minutes and I've done all that talking and got the wreath basically made. I hope you can see that. My camera setup is not the greatest either. Now, I 
like I said, I use these little fish in my other wreath, in this wreath. See my little fish, and I put shells on, and I put some twine. And on this wreath, I didn't have any more of these. I had gotten the fish a couple years ago somewhere, and I added a little to it. But I got this. This is paper mache. You know, it's just an anchor that you get at Hobby Lobby. And I mean, it, they're very cheap. Like, it was probably on sale. I think I paid $2 and something for it. I painted it. And I always put decoupage or some sort of, I mean, Mod Podge, which is decoupage, on top to give it a little shine and a little protection. I wrapped the twine. I had the twine. I just glued a piece to start, wrapped, wrapped, you know, cut it off, and glued again. Now, to put this on, <clears throat> you know, this is as light as a feather, this anchor. I will just glue this on. I don't think that's going to hurt a thing. I don't see any need to get out wire and, and other materials because I think the glue will do the trick. So what I would, all I do is I put a little bit maybe on the mesh and I hold this anchor on it. I've tried to, and then I might even, uh, this part that has the twine, I'll put some on the mesh because the twine will catch uh, harder. And like I said, I'll just uh, end up putting a few shells. These are just those El Chico shells that I got at who knows where. Uh, Walmart, it could could be uh, Michael's, could be Hobby Lobby, and every anchor is, or every uh, wreath will look different. So you might want shells down here, you might want some up here, or both. Um, I didn't I have, I still have more to, to uh, glue down, but I'll just glue under here and under here. I mean, it's very light that paper mache is, but I would glue in several places to be sure and keep it stable. Um, like I said, then I'll just take some shells. Oh, yeah. I just place it around and say, oh, what would look pretty? Um, I have these little shells. I think they're so cute. I might use one up here. Um, so I just put a little glue. I mean, you're not going to wire a shell on. So I put a little glue on it. I just hold it a few seconds. And let me give you another little tip. I'm going to do a tips and trick video one of these days. But you pro probably already know this. But I bought this spatula at uh, the Dollar Tree and it's silicone so I can just mash that and it doesn't matter how much glue gets on it it just peels right off same thing on my little green mat my green mat that I use for my glue gun is just a pie crust uh, it's it's very thin it's silicone and it's something you use to Roll out your pie crust. So your granny probably had one. But I just bought that. I cut it in half, and now I have two surfaces that I can use to put my glue gun on. Okay, don't tell my husband this. But one night, I left my glue gun on all night. That would be grounds for I don't know what. But anyway... I, I came down to the basement to see what was, you know, just to come back down and do some more work. And I looked and I saw that and I thought, oh my gosh, that's probably gone through on the table and blah, blah, blah. It had not done anything. It was on there um, and it just popped off. And I was just totally amazed. Now, he would probably be amazed too, but we're not going to tell him about that so I hope none of his 
friends hear this because I'm sure they will go tell them. But anyway, so he'll be down here every night looking to make sure I turn it off. But it, oh, it's going to be so cute. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna glue, 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 glue on my shells. And then I want to show you a picture at the end. Uh, or I really plan on putting, putting a picture at the beginning of the tutorial. So, I don't really like where that is. Oh, another little tip I might give you. Eek. I use, this is a Sure Bonder, which I'm sure any, just about any glue gun's going to be, you know, pretty good. But I made sure this one had a, the low temp. I have not found anything at all that it hasn't glued down for me very well. And I definitely don't burn my hands like I used to. I mean, you can get a little burn, but mm -mm, I used to cry. Sometimes I would be burned so badly. And so that doesn't happen with the low temp. And I've never seen anything that it didn't hold. You know, it. I think some people think, oh, if I don't use high temp, it'll fall off. Not true. I've never seen anything fall off. I've been using it a couple years. Um, so, anyway, I won't bore you with the rest of it, but I just will put some shells on. Now, here's another thing you might want to do. <clears throat> oh, I did buy this little, um, the, what is it, the wheel? <laughs> the guide? Well, I can't even think of it. The navigator wheel. Anyway, I think that it's metal. Isn't it cute? Doesn't it blend in? I'll be putting that somewhere. Um, I have this white rope. If you like, put it, you know, just intermittently placing the rope around. Uh, it does look so cute. And then you just go back in and glue. And, um, uh, you know, you'd go all the way around like that and place it like you want it. Maybe sort of stick it down between two ruffles a little bit. And then just take your glue gun and go around in different spots. Just glue it down however you like it. Another, um, this is white, looks like rope. You might even want to wrap your anchor in the white. This I, uh, uh, is a smaller twine than the twine that's on the anchor. But again, you could just, oh, that really goes with this mesh because it has a little bit of a beige streak through it. So you could just, I got this stuff at um, Michael's. Again, I always buy everything half price, but look how that just curls and you just glue it on. And there you go. But you saw the wreaths at the beginning. Maybe I need to put them on at the end, too. Um, that's basically it. Uh, all I need to do now is just cut off my mesh. And I can zip tie it or just tuck it in. And there is pretty much the finished product. Let's see if I can... Oops, the steering wheel fell down. <laughs> and it, it was just a little, just a little thing I got at Hobby Lobby. Now, you will notice we used almost the entire blue, but we did put two extra sections and it is thinner, so it takes more to fill up. We didn't use <clears throat> as much we have this much left on the it looks like snow to me or uh, sometimes you can use it at Christmas for snow you could use it as cotton you could use it as I did here for the, to represent the water so we 
Didn't use as much of this one. This was cheaper anyway, so it didn't hurt that we used almost the whole roll. And, as you notice, I really didn't use very many tools at all. I mean, I have everything ready, but I really didn't need anything. So, I think there's a subscribe button down there or a place for comments, and I would just really appreciate your comments. Except, don't tell me I talk too much, because I already know that one. Um, and I hope to have at least one or more video each week. So you guys have a great week. I hope you had a great Easter yesterday. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.